Well, Steve, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. Hey, my pleasure. Because a lot of people don't know this uh, because they're watching this. This is going to probably come up in uh, July, but we're recording this on May 15th, and it's your birthday. Correct. And I'm so glad that you uh, decided to wear more than just your birthday suit. And everybody else is, too. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> well, you know, I'm looking at you, and I'm thinking, you look incredible for 103 years old. I hey, just... I, it's, it's just good living. It's all that... It's the coffee, the beer, and the cigars. That's what it is. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say 29, but uh, we used to have a guy in my hometown who always said, yeah, I'm 65. And it was like, man, life has been rough on you, pal. <laughs> Really? Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. In, no he was kidding. in his mid eighties. No, I'm 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 only sixty five. It's like no, no, you're not. <laughs> so, well, Steve, uh, we are recording today for the uh, Learn Ventriloquism blog, and I want to take a chance and take an opportunity to introduce you to some people that may not know you, although I'm sure that a lot of our viewers do. Um, talk to me about how you became interested in the art of ventriloquism. Uh, I'm like most everybody, well, what I classify a lot of the people is that, you know, at 14 I started ventriloquism, and oddly enough it wasn't me, it was my brother, my younger brother that actually sent off with a little 25 cents to get the little booklet, and it's one of those old booklets, and, you know, I don't know how anybody learned ventriloquism out of that, because, you know, over the years, because some people say they did, but it's like I couldn't understand it. So I ended up going to the library, and that's where I found Paul Winchell's book, The Key to Ventriloquism, and that's kind of where it started from there. And then, of course, like most people, I did it through school and that type of thing. But then as I got into adulthood and everything else, life happened, and it kind of put on the back burner, and so I always classified myself as an on-again, off-again ventriloquist. And then it was in the... Uh, after the second divorce, uh, that I had always wanted to build a dummy. And so I just thought, you know, I'm going to do it one way or the other. And so it took me a while, but I finally built the dummy. And once I built it, then I got back into it. And, you know, and, and now I'm a webmaster and partner with Dan Wellinger with Ventriloquist Central. So, yeah, that's about how it went. <laughs> 